we had found in the previous cases that the shopkeeper of just fancy stores had used the quantity which we call mode to determine which dress that he was selling had sold the most so here we can clearly see that the dress which cost rupees 700 corresponding to the spider man dress had sold the most and if the shopkeeper in future makes more of these dresses it would mean that people would buy more of these dresses and it would maximize the profit so what can we say we can say that mode is the variate with the maximum frequency or in other words the particular variate that occurs maximum number of times in the given set of observations so over here we have a class teacher who had taken a surprise test of 20 students so now if i have to find out the mode of this particular data what will it be firstly in order to make stuff easier for us we arrange the data in ascending order now after arranging it we find that 6 is occurring 4 times that is the number 6 has been obtained by 4 students similarly the number of the mark 7 has been obtained by 4 students and the same is the case for the mark of the number 8 so here we find that 6 7 and 8 are each occurring with equal frequency so over here the mode of the data can be represented by each of these three this particular data set has no one mode it has instead three modes six seven and eight because all these three numbers occur with the same frequency and that is the highest frequency of occurrence in a similar manner if we reduce the number of students let's say we consider one two three four five six seven eight nine students and the teacher has taken a surprise test of these nine students as you can see no mark has been repeated over here that is each student has obtained unique marks so what can we say is the mode of the data in this case this particular data set has no mode because all these are occurring once in the particular data set so this data set or this set of observations has no mode so as we can see that a given set of observations can have one mode it can have more than one mode or it can even have no mode depending on what the frequency of occurrence of each variate is So now we are given a simple frequency distribution table that is depending on the same data that we had previously seen where the teacher had conducted a surprise test of 20 students we have constructed a simple frequency distribution table now as you can see in a simple frequency distribution table the variate is written alongside with its frequency so since the frequency is present as a column over here we can directly say which variate is the mode because that frequency which is the highest in the frequency column its corresponding variate will be the mode of the given set of observations so in this case the number 7 or the variate 7 is the mode of the given set of observations now let us consider what happens if instead of discrete distribution we are given group distribution or distribution in the form of class intervals now these class intervals have been provided to us and the respective frequencies along with them so we have studied that when data is given to us in the form of class intervals we can represent it in the form of a histogram now you must recall how to draw a histogram individual classes are considered and the respective frequency is plotted with the help of a bar the things to remember were there should be no spacing in between successive bars and the width of each bar should remain constant because it represented the class width so let us see how we can estimate the mode from the histogram that we have drawn now in order to do so we have to calculate through a very simple technique 
What is that simple technique? Firstly, we have to find out which one is the bar which has the highest or greatest length. As you can see, the greatest length is possessed by the bar lying in the class interval 40 to 50. So this particular bar has the greatest length. So what I do is I consider the leftmost point of this bar and I draw a straight line to meet the next bar where it starts as you can see. Similarly, I consider the rightmost point of this bar and I draw a straight line to where the previous bar ends that is this point. So now I have obtained a cross-like structure. If you notice closely, you will find that these two straight lines have intersected at a particular point. From that point, I draw a straight line which will be perpendicular to the x-axis. So from the point of intersection of the two straight lines, I draw a line that will be perpendicular to the x-axis. So the point where this line is meeting the x-axis will give us the mode of the given data set. So this particular point, which as you can see, corresponds to a value of about 48, will give us the mode of the given data set. So this is how, in a very simple manner, we can calculate what the mode is. So over here, as we saw, this point represented the mode and we found that it was equal to 48. And obviously that would depend on the scale that you have considered in drawing your histogram. So how is this quantity mode useful in day-to-day -day applications? So let us say there is a shopkeeper who sells shoes. Now he wants to find out which particular type or variety of shoe is most in fashion or most popular. So how does he do so? He simply checks his sales over a past period of time and he finds out which shoe has sold the most. That particular shoe which has sold the most is the variant with the highest frequency or the mode. So the shopkeeper can ensure his increased profit if he manufactures more and more of that particular variety of shoe. 